Oh shit, hold on dude, I'm hacking a hologram. Now, I gotta come clean. I have never played Cyberpunk. All I know is that a lot of people thought it was pretty doo-doo when it came out. And since then, who knows? So this series is my first introduction to the spunky world of Cyberpunk. And my god is it amazing. It makes me have feelings again. Like some kind of 14 year old kid or something. Now, there are a lot of animes which have massive, humongous episode counts. Edge Runners has an episode count of just 10. Like me, they're short but sweet. And so it never feels like they're stretching out the content to get to that 100 episode arc just to have something to put out each week. The story happens quick, and each episode has a significant plot point that makes the episode feel necessary. Nothing feels like filler, and this low episode count means they can really pour that money into creating visually stunning action scenes, which are full of movement with multiple different shots and angles, they come at you like rapid fire. So what is Cyberpunk Edgerunners? Some spoilers for the show, don't be mad, okay please let's go. Well, set in the same world as the game, Edgerunners is a futuristic Netflix anime which focuses on a young boy who after being failed by the system, throws himself into the world of a criminal gang full of members who have enhanced their bodies, replacing parts with metal and gizmos, basically rated R and Spectre Gadget. Now, in the opening credits, which look amazing, there are two credits which I'm so glad they included. The first one is the colour designer, Yakiko Kakita. Now, usually the opening credits are made up of the actors' names and maybe the editor, producer, all that jazz. And yes, these are all very important parts of filmmaking and animation. But you know what else is very important? Colour. And for them to actually give them a spot in the opening credits is just a nice touch. It also tells you a lot about this show that they got a colour director involved, because the use of colour in this show is incredible. Night City is futuristic, full of tech and screens and neon lights, and with all this, naturally comes a whole lot of colour, with a heavy use of yellow and purple and light blues. Having a lot of colour on screen at one time and not having it be overwhelming is very difficult. It's something that Into the Spider-Verse perfected, and Edge Runners gives it a run for its money. Get it? Because, because runs in the title. And scenes which are full of grey and brown and dark tones to convey the metal cold feel of Night City, still manage to slip some bright colours in to remind you that even though this city is a horribly violent place, look how pretty and bright it is too. It's a perfect mix of grimy and bright. It's a great nod to how we, as a sorry, society, society, may become more advanced in terms of technology, but there will always be violence and addiction no matter how advanced we get. Another inclusion in the credits is the background director, Mazanobu Nomura, and this just made me want to plant a wet kiss right on Cyberpunk's gooch, because background art is something which often gets swept under the rug when talking and making animation. I've talked about this in a previous video where Netflix's new animation made me blind because of how awful it looked. Animation is a visual art form and you want to have as much of your screen be engaging as possible. Anime is a style which is notorious for its gorgeous background art, often looking like it's hand painted in so much detail. And in Cyberpunk, these backgrounds don't just look incredible, but they serve a purpose in the story and themes of the show. Everything is technology, and the backgrounds show this, and everything feels cramped in and busy. If they didn't have these detailed backgrounds, the enhanced humans who inhabit this city would be far less believable. They'd stand out more, and the whole idea is that these enhancements are kind of part of everyday life now. Your grandma probably has one. The more powerful and harmful these enhancements are, the more illegal they become, as well as being harder to find. Speaking of the characters, they do a great job of making each one stand out from each other visually. Their haircuts and makeup are all bold, even if it's just with small details like the slit in the lead's hair. I mean, take a look at Steampunk, it's all gizmos and monocles and trench coats and loads of boots. And the cyberpunk style is similar but more technology based. Which brings me to what really separates everyone, which is the enhancements. Everyone seems like they have a different part of their body which has been replaced, which doesn't only just look sick, but leads to different abilities and strengths. Enhanced legs? Off you go, Mr. Usain Bolt. Enhanced eyes? I don't know, you can probably get free access to Puna Premium or something like that. Oh shit, hold on dude, I'm hacking a hologram. There's all kind of kooky and crazy upgrades, and these enhancements could run the risk of being way too overpowered to be interesting. But they come up with a pretty clever way to balance them out, making them just as much of a blessing as they are a curse. The more enhancements you get, the more your chance of becoming a cyber psycho, which basically means you black out and go, Coo -coo. 
go, 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 go. trying to kill everyone around you. It's a nice way of showing that the more human you strip away to replace with machine, your ability to feel what makes you human may also disappear. Anime characters often look perfect, or at least very good looking. I mean, name someone who wouldn't smash the glob man from Akira after half a pint. Often they'll have sharp jawlines, symmetrical faces, big piercing eyes, and for the most part it's a visual style. You know, there isn't a whole lot of reason behind it other than it's the traditional style of Japan and most anime is Japanese, so it follows this. Also, most shows want to make their leads look like hot stuff so it's more marketable. But in Cyberpunk, there's an actual story reason for this somewhat. During a scene in which a character blacks out and attacks the others, we see that he's ripped off some of his friend's face. Her face is synthetic. It's handmade. In a world where people can enhance any part of their body, what do you think's the first thing they're going to change? Apart from their schlong. It'd be their face. They'd get a bit of Margot Robbie in there, a bit of Brad Pitt, maybe some Danny DeVito too for the bedroom. So everyone looking done up and perfect all the time fits in with the feel that everything in this world has been altered somewhat. At the beginning of the show, David looks like this. He's got healthy skin, he's slim but he's not shady, and he's kind of small, at least compared to a lot of other characters. Over the course of the show, as he becomes addicted to these cyber enhancements, he becomes more robotic. His skin becomes pale, almost blue in some scenes, he becomes a muscle-bound freak, and this gradual progression coincides with his gradual descent into the criminal world, as he loses more and more of his grip on reality and his morals, blacking out and killing an innocent mother. But out of everything, I think the best stylistic choice that Edge Runners makes is the way that they depict the super speed that comes with David's enhancements. So in animation, there is a feature called Onion Skin. And what this means is that you can see the frame before and after the one you're currently on, and they're a different colour. It's like a trail of movement. Now, when a character in Cyberpunk moves at an incredibly quick pace due to their enhancements, it looks like they leave the onion skin in, showing the previous frames and where they've come from. And this means that they don't have to slow down the scene as much, because you have a visual trail of where David is running. You don't have to go, oh shit, what just happened? Let me rewind it real quick. It also makes it look like he's moving so fast that he's a blur. You can't really focus on him because your eyes are trying to catch up with the previous versions of him. And this video wouldn't be complete without talking about the glitching. As a character's cyberpsychosis worsens the more metal and tech they infuse with their bodies, the animators needed to find a visual way of showing this on top of just having them look more machine than person. So when they're feeling the worst effects of this psychosis, their head will move all over the place, like they're writhing in pain, but the head animation will lag, leaving multiple versions of it on screen at one time. It's a great way of showing a character is no longer in control of their body and their mind is splitting into pieces. Every visual element is so clearly thought out in this show and it was such a welcome surprise from both a game and a company who are kind of known at this point for putting out underwhelming content. I really hope that Netflix and the Cyberpunk continue to explore stories set in this world because you can do so much with this concept. So yeah, let me know what you thought of the show down below and um, thank you so much for 250 subscribers, all the likes, feedback, comments, it's so nice, honestly really appreciate it. Um, thank you, I love you, goodbye.